Hello and welcome to a brand new save of Kerbal Space Program 1 modded series with remote tech, tech life support, USI colonization and many other mods. This is gonna be awesome. It's a last hurrah before the new KSP-like games come such as the Space Flight Simulator, Kitten Space Agency and many others. So jump with us as we go along this epic journey which will be spanning multiple episodes. And today we're going to be focusing on the sounding rockets. Yes, sounding rockets, sending them up, getting that initial kick of science as we yearn to get to space and then later to orbit. So stick around, it's going to be fun. And we begin by introducing the first new mod, KSC Enhanced. As you can tell, we have two runways, multiple hangars. I just thought this mod looks cool. And we have obviously environmental visual enhancements, scatterer, uh, volumetric clouds, and many others. First things first, let's go into the basics of the rocketry. We want to be building our rocket and every rocket needs an engine, a payload, an avionics, control surfaces and many others. So first we introduce the strut and this will be a small sounding rocket, 3.25 meters. And we need an avionics package to be able to control the craft. And then on top of it, we will be having two batteries because those will be providing the power, powering all the systems inside. Then we want to be putting the rocket motor at the bottom of it, as well as some science package. We are playing a science save, which means we have a tech tree with a progression that we want to unlock. So we are being putting all the experiments, material study, we're putting engineering, we're putting avionics, we're putting meteorological data, and as well as many thermometers. I was thinking of putting a mystery goo, but it was sticking out. It didn't look out nice. And I really want to be designing plausible rockets that actually do make sense and that could work in real life. So I figured might as well be putting stuff inside and uh, I was trying to see, it, was there anything else I could cram? And then I realized, two more thermometers, because I don't have the science collecting machine. Speaking of that, let us be constructing the fairing. So we're going to be putting two fairings. And by the way, so for those of you asking, this is Sounding Rockets, mod by Rover Dude, who is actually now on, or who was, on the Kerbal Space Program team. What happened to him? I have no idea, since the closure of the Intercept games. Speaking of this, this is our rocket. We need to check our staging, and the first stage will obviously be the rocket motor, then we will have a decoupler with the fairing trusses, and then the third one would be the main important uh, parachute, which will bring our experiments hopefully home safely. So this one we're going to be calling Sounding Rocket 1 and I'm going to be limiting my thrust because if I look at the Kerbal Engineer, which is the window on the top left corner, there is a value TWR, which means thrust to weight. And that value actually tells you how quickly your rocket will be accelerating comparing to the gravity which is pulling it back. One means it's not go accelerating upwards. Lower than one, it will never leave the ground, while higher than one means it will be ascending. Now, the optimal number is between 1.6 and 1.8, because if your thrust to weight is too high, it will scream through the atmosphere and probably disassemble itself while it's trying to get there. So, the next mod we are playing is Kerbal Construction Time, which means everything takes time to build, and I thought it would be fun to introduce a an element of difficulty because your rockets do take time to build. And I thought it was kind of interesting and fun for those of you that don't know, have never encountered the Kerbal construction time. So now we are finished, our sounding rockets is finished building and we are rolling it out to the pad. And through the magic of video editing, I cut out some parts and look at this. This rocket looks beautiful. Look at that takeoff. Isn't it just amazing with the moon in the background? By the way, it's Mun, not Moon. Yes, this is Kerbal system after all. And look how beautifully this rocket is ascending. Now, it's not going too far and it has already decoupled and now it's going flippity flop. But that's enough because it is in the air above, which means at this point we're going to be soon deploying the fairings and we're going to be taking the science measurement. By the way, 
the window on the top left is called X Science. It's a mod which is telling me which of the experiments are currently available. So I don't miss out an opportunity to perform an experiment should that happen. Right, as you can see from the <coughs> bottom or from, from the right hand side, I'm using uh, loads of mods. Visual mods that are making this game looking really beautiful, despite the fact that it's, it's well over 12 or what was it, 13 years old now? I mean, seriously, I'm really looking for some overhaul and I'm really hoping that the Kitten Space Agency, which is being developed by Rocketworks, yes, I want to bring your attention to that one, will hopefully become a true spiritual successor to the Kerbal brand because, well, it's bringing also some innovations, but gameplay-wise, I think it will be hitting that nostalgia that I'm getting when playing this beautiful game. Right, speaking about that, as you can tell, we, oh, we have a MegJab. Well, I'm not usually f a big fan of MegJab. To be honest, I've never used the autopilot of it, but I'm a bigger fan of controlling everything manually. However, at this point, I'm just having it because it came pre-installed with some of the other mods that I was using. And at this point, I'm gonna do a little bit of black magic with the video editing and speed accelerate this... Speed accelerate? Apparently, I don't know what I'm talking about accelerate this wonderful footage while we are descending through the Kerbal Space Center Enhanced. And the trees that you're seeing at the bottom are the courtesy of the latest Parallax mod. It's a mod by, I think, Linux Guru Gamer. I think the, this mod is amazing. The Parallax 2.0 continued, the paid version, and I saw an, I've seen a lot of controversy in terms of like people asking for support. Yeah, I mean, guys, it's, it's almost like a DLC. It adds a lot of visual quality and fidelity. And if you want to have it, I mean, I think $5, I've paid it as well, uh, is actually a good amount to pay. It's not a really such a big deal. However, it looks beautiful and it adds much ambience and it brings life into this game. So while I understand, I mean, it's in some extra cost, but look at this, how beautiful it looks. I don't know. For me, it's worth it despite the fact how much I will play it. Our rocket has actually sent it down and I'm actually performing all the remaining science and only thing that I can do are the temperature scans and maybe the telemetry probe. The science returned once we actually get back is 93, which is beautiful. Let's go to the tech tree and start unlocking some nodes. Basic rocketry, definitely unlocking because, well, that will propel us further. Then it comes to the Engineering 101. This will also give us some trusses and stuff. And I think I'm gonna go with the general rocketry because, well, that gives us some mainly important rocket parts. How much marm we have? We have 63. I think we have entirety of these nodes, stability and survivability. I think this is enough to be unlocked for now. We have 30 more, but I'm gonna spend those on unlocking the launch stands, the modular, what was it called? Modular launch plates or something like that. So general launch bases. Right, that's enough. Also, unlocking new nodes gives us some tech points in the tech tree. At this point, at the VIB, these speeds that you're seeing is the speeds how rockets are being built. So you do at the beginning want to invest into the rate one and a little bit into rate two because it will be telling you how quickly you will or how long do you need to wait for the rockets to be built. Now, since I unlocked the tech nodes, I intended to make this a two-stage rocket, but when I can't, went to the couplers, I realized there aren't any. And that's because the Kerbal construction time also provides time until the tech nodes are unlocked. So we needed to accelerate the time. So I threw the magic of video editing, I cut it out. However, that's also something to be considered. Now, now that I have decouplers and all of those tech nodes have been unlocked through the magic of video editing, for me it took like a little bit of waiting with accelerated time, I can design a two-stage rocket. And a two-stage rocket has a lot of delta V and this one should be enough to get us all the way to space. Not orbit, just space. Because <clears throat> the difference being is Going to space means crossing the Kerman line, which is around 75, I think, kilometers in KSP, while going to orbit means that we have to pick up also horizontal velocity so that the craft going up never falls down, or it actually tries to fall down and the Kerman is constantly avoiding it. 
Now this was the second craft which didn't go too well. I did, remember, I did build two of those and another two of the other type. And the purpose with this one was I was trying to land it and then perform everything on the ground, but it smashed and it didn't go too well. So I just decided to take the loss and continue onwards. Because the next one to be built is the Sounding Rocket 1B, which had a little bit longer booster. And the one with the longer booster meant it would go higher, so maybe even we would be able to tackle this high altitude uh, loadouts. And in the worst case, we could take a beautiful biome. Now, look at this. Doesn't li this look gorgeous? Just look at this beautiful sounding rocket ascending into the heavens. And look at this volumetric clouds and the lighting. I mean, these light shaft and god rays, I mean, it's just amazing. Gives me the heebie-jeebies now. Even better, when you cross the cloud layer, just look how beautiful it looks. I mean, seriously? This is just poetry, guys. I don't know how else to describe it. This is just poetry. I'm taking a screenshot, obviously, so if you notice the cloud just yanking it a little bit. But we are not in the high atmosphere, so we are actually quite low. So I will not be performing the experiments. As you can see, X Science is telling me that all of these experiments have already been done. Meaning, I will wait until it falls on the grass, on the grasslands somewhere, deploying the chute. And once it falls down, then, when it's landed, it's a different situation. The science is tied to different situations, flying low, flying high, in orbit, or landed. In this case, I haven't performed experiments of landed, which means I will be doing them now, once this thing lands at the Kerbal Space Center. One would ask, why did I bother to shoot the rocket that high up to perform the science all the way to the ground? I should, could have just gotten to Kerbal to grab them in the hand and walk over to this giant antenna. Well, I don't have a good answer to that, I'm sorry to say. However, it is what it is, but we're gonna be performing the science just at the base of this huge antenna at the Kerbal Space Center, and that means we will be once again getting a boatload of science that we can profit from. Some of these temperature scans will be duplicate, but ultimately I don't care. Once again, it's 76.9 science earned, which brings us back to the 93 science. And you know what that means? Unlocking basic science. And I'm just now thinking, I do want to have a flight control because this will be giving us the SAS and the control modules. And I'm thinking probably basic science will give us more science experiments and science collection. Advanced rocketry, while it would be nice to have, I haven't even breached space or the high altitude, so I don't really need it at the moment. Or I could go with the aviation. I actually think I'm gonna unlock the aviation because, well, that means I could be starting to build planes soon enough once it gets unlocked. Now, improving the R&D means there are two things, research and development. One of them means amount research that gets gained per day, the amount of science you get per day, and the another, sorry, or, or actually you get by building craft, you get back some science. And we're going to be scrapping the sounding rocket 1B again, because it all did all the science, we don't really need it. So we're going to warp ahead to perform the last launch, the sounding rocket 2, the two-stage exciting vehicle that will be getting us places. And it's a little bit rainy today, apparently, but that doesn't bother our brave Kerbals. After all, this is a remote-controlled craft, and we have ignition. Hit it, maestro! There we go. Our rocket takes again to the skies because we know that the skies above this are really beautiful. We just need to get to through this initial rain and some thunderstorms, well, however precarious it may sound. And this, as you can tell, the first stage is performing amicably and is going onwards and upwards. And we're hoping to be able to get to the higher levels, high at altitude performance. We are already crossing Mach 1 and we're going to be staging really soon, right about... Come on, dragging it, World forks. Hopefully, soon enough. Yeah, there we go. And hit it, Maestro. So now the second stage ignited, which will be taking us all the way. I'm thinking to the high altitude. I don't know if we'll be able to cross the Kerman line yet. 
However, as you can tell, we are flying high over Kerbin at this point and we have consumed all of our fuel and we're not going to be crossing the Kerman line. It's 62 kilometers up, but it's good enough for some high altitude science, which means I'm popping the experiments and perform all science. Thank you very much. We're going to keep the meteorological engineering and materials temperature scan and we're going to send. The reason being is when you, you have a temperature scan and you're sending it, it requires the same amount of science when you're transmitting it back, which means it could be rerun again, while the other ones, some other experiments, which are bringing back samples, those require to, for example, like this, our astronomical experiments, that will bring only 1.6 science if transmitted, compared to the 19 science if you return the experiment back. The benefit of transmitting is that you can do the experiment again, while the benefit of keeping is that you get much more science. So there's always this dance between should we keep the science or should we transmit it. So as always, I'm kind of transmitting everything where I don't have the loss. Right. Okay, so we're going to be putting this avionics package right about on the right hand side, making sure that this is wonderfully flipping. Now. We are at the altitude of 62 and I'm hoping that we will be getting down soon enough. So we are re-entering the Kerbin's atmosphere and as you can tell, we are already experiencing some atmospheric forces. However, the further down into the thicker layers of the atmosphere we go, and we can also here talk about the FAR, Ferrum Aerospace Research. It creates a much more believable atmosphere around Kerbin where the air thickens like over time compared to the stock one which is more like a different mod which is a little bit more thicker atmosphere more extreme approach now we are actually supersonic i was waiting until it becomes safe to deploy the chute as indicated by the gray icon from the parachute in the bottom left corner and now we are flying high above grasslands so i decided to perform the science and hit all the important biomes which is basically the grasslands and look at those beautiful mountains we are at 2.8 kilometers above and i'm going to accelerate the time a little bit because there is no point of me just you know yapping happily until we come very close to the landing speaking of it it looks really beautiful look at this wonderful i really feel like you know parallax mod really brings your environment to a whole new level. It makes it more fun, it makes it more engaging. And visual, like clouds from Black Crack, volumetrics, they're just awesome. It's really beautiful and let us be softly landing where we are and there you go. By the way, for those of you asking, this mod is camera mod extended, which also provides you to do some flybys and cinematic experiences. So while we're here, I might as well trigger one more temperature scan, which I can do. So log temperature, there you go. And this is wonderful performance science. I think I can do a telemetry report and let's recover. 84 science gained for a total, grand total of 97. Beautiful. Going back to the tech tree, we can start unlocking some more advanced node with the general rocketry, or advanced rocketry, sorry, which would give us some terrier engines and some bigger fuel tanks. General construction that could give us the launch clamps as well as some nose cones and stuff. That might be handy, but I'm almost leaning into getting the basic science, which will actually allow us to get more experiments, experiment collector item, and much more. Right. Okay, so with that thing being said, I'm going to be spending a couple of upgrades to improve my uh, airplane building rate. And with that being said, thank you very much for watching. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the series if you want to see more episodes as they come up. Thank you very much for watching. This is Groundforks signing off.